So we're gonna be moving on to semifinals. What is the map gonna be? I will check in a second. It is Avalanche, apparently. Is it? Hmm. Yes, it is. Yep. Avalanche v2. Avalanche is the map for the semifinals for game one. We're going to be playing on that map. I I like this map. This is a good map. It's a bit of a tricky map, though. It's very deceptively simple, but it's actually got a lot going on with it because of the way the paths are set up. It's a tiny map, but man, there's there's a lot of ways around it. There's a lot of ways to just manage everything going on. And Forever Forever 1? What? Holy crap. Well done Forever. I am impressed. Good show. I mean, like I said, Clone is my favorite win. They're in the losers bracket. I mean, they'll probably power through and get to the losers finals, but still. Wow. Well done. Good job Forever. Okay, so There we go. We are on to Avalanche. Yeah, like I said, this map, deceptively simple. It's tiny, but it's just this north side, not a lot of resources, but if you ignore it, you can get hit hard. And the south side, of course, south side has a ton of resources, so you want to deal with that. But, oops. But at the same time, it's also a little tempting to ignore because that center, that's that rush there that can come in, which it looks like Yurga might be going for with the early light vehicle factory. Both players, in fact, going for light vehicles. Looks like Yogg's not going for a more defensible position, just with the, north, the factory right next to the early metal extractor. Well, Yurga being a bit more forward, not much though, but a bit more forward with their factory. Now, I should point out, of course, this is, in fact, this is a symmetric map. It's, well, just about, yeah, it's kind of, it's symmetric along this axis. More or less? Yeah, it is, yeah, it is, yeah, because this this metal extractor corresponds with this one and this one here. Yeah, okay. So yeah, Yogg'Soth is definitely playing a bit more defensively than Yurga is. And that looks like it might pay off. Right now. As Yogg'Soth takes out one of Yurga's metal extractors and saves one of their own. Yeah, Yogg'Soth pulling ahead right at the start. But yeah, this is why, as you can see, the elo values, both near, both just around 2050. Like, this should be a pretty good close match. Although, very nice harassment from Yogstoth early on. Yurga might not be able to recover from this too quickly. Avalanche, you've got to be careful. If you start losing, if you start getting advantage. But it is going to be a bit of a problem. Like that. Like you gotta get, you gotta reclaim it pretty quick. Like, reclaim and rebuild. Oh wow, Yogstoth doing a lot of damage here. Taking out another... Like, Wow, taking on everything Yurga has. Like, Yurga can't build up at this point. And Yogstoth just continuing to expand, continuing to get up their economy going. This is going so heavily in Yogstoth's favor early on. Very good early game. Yurga's not out, though. Yurga's far from out. They still have... I mean, they can still just micro back in. They can still get their units in. And they are aware of what's going on in the north, so they aren't going to be completely caught off guard. Or at least... Not necessarily. It looks like they were actually trying to go either see if something was coming up from the north or just attack from the north. And attack from the north is in... It, that's in fact what they're going to do. And attack, attack from the center as well. Counterattack from Yurga. Now this is going to kill... Oh, not quite kill the dart. Damage the dart. Always got to remember, every building explosion causes damage. Don't be too close to buildings when they explode. Or to anything, really. Most things don't deal much damage, but for a dart, that has like 120 health. That's hardly any health. Okay, yeah, Lordy pointing out Forever actually played really well and got to Banthas on Folsom. I mean, I'm not terribly surprised they got to Banthas on Folsom, but yeah. Sounds like it was a fairly even match, and Forever won. So that's that's really good. Well done. I mean, Clone is a beast of a player, or at least was a beast of a player. I imagine they still are. I've seen them fairly recently. They, they're they good. So Forever beating Clone means that Forever's gotten good. Curious to see how they progress in this tournament. That's, like I said, that's kind of an upset for me, but... 
Cool. I like this. That's the cool thing about tournaments, when you get upsets like that. When you get games that just go... You think that someone's going to lose, and then all of a sudden, holy crap, they're they're on their way to first place. Well, at any rate, I mean, that's one of the biggest comp biggest pieces of competition that is going to be there. Of course, the next one is going to be Honu or Kane, but I think that both Honu and Kane... I'm not sure about Kane. I'm not sure about either of them. Those might be threats, but I mean, if Forever beat Clone, then Forever probably has enough skill to beat either of those players right off. Still, skill isn't exactly transitive. Anyway, Yogg'Soth maintaining their advantage pretty nicely. That center push is good too, but it's not that big of an advantage. The, the economy advantage, okay, that's big. Like, plus 5 metal, that's, I mean, when a factory takes minus 10, although admittedly Yurga's not building, why is Yurga not building? I don't know. Why aren't they building economy, or sorry, energy? I really don't know. They have hardly any power plants to work with. I guess they were just reclaiming as many trees as they could. Like, yeah, that's... How much reclaim is there for energy? Okay, right now there's like 600 energy reclaim. Alright, so the trees actually do provide a decent amount of energy to work with. But yeah, this is probably going to be it. Yogstoth pushing in. Just pushing Yurga out of the center. Yurga hasn't taken the south either. Neither player has, in fact, and neither player taking the north. I mean, both players are very focused on that center. Really want to make sure their opponent can't take it. Yogstoth has succeeded. Yurga not going to the south to try to take those metal extractors because, I mean, at this point, they don't have to worry about it. It's not like anything can go through. Bots can path along this cliff. Vehicles cannot. Nice or Oh, wow, this is actually pretty effective harassment, possibly. See what happens, though. It really comes down to the placement. This Scorcher is... Okay, that's well placed. Get rid of that. Get rid of the Builder first. Seriously, get rid of that Mason. Like, is it going to work otherwise? I don't know. I don't think so. That Slasher is going to be able to finish it off. Yeah, that, that'll put a stop to it. Ouch. Quarter of its health left in the factory. Put a stop to it, though, and capture... Ooh, nice. Dominatrix capturing that Scorcher was not the best move for the Dominatrix. I mean, overall, the Dominatrix was not a particularly good move in this situation. Desperation play. Definite desperation play from Yurga. They... Didn't expect people to get enough in time, and no, they they weren't going to be able to. That is game. I mean, even if they destroyed the factory, that I don't think anything would have really happened. Because that factory wasn't producing much. Everything that Yogstoth needed was already there. So Yurga losing in six minutes. I mean, like I said, Avalanche is one of those maps. It, it's an interesting map. It's deceptively simple, but it's also... It's kind of small, but there's a lot you can go around with it. But Yurga didn't really take advantage of that. Neither did Yogstoth. Not that Yogstoth needed to, but Yurga didn't either, economically speaking. Which I found really surprising. Okay, so apparently Forever is actually just a really kind of an intelligent gimmicky player. They're not so much necessarily good at straightforward skill, but they are apparently quite good at making the most of game features. I can respect that. I can respect the hell out of that. I think when people do that, it's awesome. Oh yeah, and I guess it's Yogstoth's prediction down the tubes. With Clone being in the loser's bracket. Okay, 2-1 for Kane, nice. So, the round of 16 is done. Kane and Forever being the only match that hadn't yet started. And it looks like Inculta, yep. Yeah, Yurga is on Inculta wet. I'm going to have to change my water type, apparently. Because you won't be able to see it. Give me a sec, I think it's three is what I need. I want to do that beforehand so that I don't have to worry about that during. Although, unless the engine, might, that bug might have been fixed now that I think about it. But just in case... Yeah, that's what I want. Okay. Just in case, switch over. Because bump bump mapped water is difficult to see stuff under, and Inculta Wet is all water. And that is the entire match.
And we will begin! Let's begin with, like I said, Cult of Wet, game two. I should probably write that down because that's a thing I'd write down at the bottom to make sure that people know what's going on. Otherwise, how are we supposed to know what's happening? Well, okay, I suppose we have experience with the game, but I don't want to assume that. I want to make sure that everyone can enjoy this. Okay. Where? Ah, right, that saved, that saved. Let's switch in. So this is in Culto Wet. As the name suggests, there is water. A lot of it. Everywhere. Actually, the name suggests this is in fact a regular dry map that has water applied to it. Works surprisingly well though, despite the fact that it wasn't originally designed for the water. You're going over the Amphib Factory, and what are we gonna have from Yogg's Duff? No clue! Yogg's Duff hasn't even placed yet. Yeah, this map, this map typically what ends up happening, players, they'll place anywhere along here. And then, basically what'll end up happening is, the center is usually the most contested, but that is taken last. It'll be usually the fringes, like take your side and then take whatever side of the map, like top, north or south, that you actually want to take. The center is taken last. If you can hold the center, you've basically won the game. And Yogstoth going for Shipyard. Okay, cool. Yogstoth getting them ships. So that will be starting right now. And early hunter or skeeter coming in. Now, this is a bit of a problem. Actually, it's a major problem. Yurga going amphib means that Yurga is going to have a massive advantage just starting out. Like, that is a big deal. The problem is basically that there are only a handful of ships can actually hit underwater. Like, snakes are purely underwater, and, let's see, so yeah, snakes underwater, you have hunters hit underwater, I think they've actually been buffed recently. Serpents, of course, but that's really expensive. Crusaders, also fairly expensive, so a lot of the things that can are quite expensive. So it'll take a while to get to it. Oh yeah, also, for the, for the, for the cred, yeah, the cred. There's no tech tree in this game, at all. Everything's based on unit costs, like, so the reason why you wouldn't be building the biggest units right out of the gate is because it'll take too long. Unit costs directly correlate to time required to build, and so anything huge would take like two or three minutes to build at the beginning of the game. So we are going to be probably seeing, well, Yerga. Yerga is the one who picked this map. So they're the one going for Amp, they're the one with the distinct advantage at the moment. Hunters coming up from Yogstoth, though, they either know or greatly suspect that Yurg is going for Amphibs. And they are very right to do so. Hunters are probably the best choice they have offhand. Hunters and probably Snakes. I think Snakes have been buffed up recently. Their health is a bit higher. So, I would say that... I would say that is going to be Yurga's advantage. And this is what Yurga wants. They want to be able to get back in this. They want to be able to even it out. want to be able to win, get to game three and win and get over into the semifinals. Because those semifinals is going to be the big game. That's, I mean, well, obviously you want the finals. Like Every time you win, you get closer to the finals. That's what they want. That's that's how a tournament works. Anyway, the basics of, comp of competitive organization aside, Yurga, their army right now, eight ducks. And these Skeeters are just sort of hanging out, not really able to do too much. Just making waves. They are making waves, right? This is dynamic water? Should be dynamic water. Sorry, this, this I had to change the water modes and I'm fairly certain this is dynamic water. Honestly, kind of hard to tell. Wait, did that? Yeah, that, that's right, I think. Well, at any rate, yeah, get rid of a few of these. Was good to have happen. Am I really on dynamic water? I don't feel like I am. Oh well, no big deal, because you can see what's going on underwater. 
That's the important thing. You need to be able to see what is happening. And what is happening is that Yurga is massing quite the army. A dozen ducks. How much is their anti-duck? Three hunters. Ah, nicely done, Yurga. Using the land to deal with the urchin without having to deal with the urchin directly. That's the thing about Amphib. They don't have to deal with sea. They don't, they don't want to. Yajdod's commander about to go down, too. Trying to get on land to avoid getting killed. But honestly, at this point, that's not going to help too much. Because, as you can see, Yurga just avoids it. Like, okay, you're going to go on land? Fine. I'll just... I'll just get out of here. Oh, never mind. That is going to be a problem. Wow, that duck... That duck must have really wanted to shoot. Got bugged out there, unfortunately. And... Yeah, okay, those hunters are going to be a bit of a problem. That That's going to be a thorn in Yurga's side. There's no denying that. Still, Yurga is getting way ahead. Both in terms of metal... Actually, not in terms of army yet, but definitely in terms of metal. These two Skeeters are dead, and yeah, they're... 36 to 23, that is a huge difference. And more ducks coming in. Wow, this harassment coming in from all sides. Yurga is relentless. They want revenge. They want revenge for that last game. They also want, apparently want to get some good splash damage going on, too. Make sure that hunters hit those wind ge tidal generators, and that won't deal too much damage, but... Yeah, all these ducks coming in, especially with the economic advantage. I mean, bear in mind, Yurga is throwing their units away, and they're... I mean, okay, they're killing some skeeters here and there. But they're throwing the units away, and they're still on par militarily. That's their economic advantage working for them. That's how big of a deal it is. Although these hunters are becoming a problem. They're actually becoming a real pain. Only, yeah, one going down for five ducks. That's pretty efficient. That's that's actually pretty efficient. 350 to 80? Yeah. Making cost. So these hunters will be a problem. And being used as raiding tools, because why not? At this point, pretty much that's the only unit Yogg'Sath has that's going to be super useful until the Crusaders are affordable. Good that they've been buffed, though. I mean, hunters used to be pretty weak when it came to their, just their overall attack. It was so weak, they wouldn't have been able to be useful in this situation. It would have been done. Oh yeah, it is dynamic water. I was drawn above water. Hmm. Oh well. The This is actually drawn on the water. Honestly, the metal output stuff should be drawn on the screen. I should probably do that at some point. But yeah, the metal output stuff really should be drawn on the screen. It, it shouldn't be drawn on the map. That I don't really know what the logic was for doing it that way. Because doing it on screen, like, behind everything else, that that just ends up giving you a, like, a perfectly readable metal display at any zoom height. And it looks like, no, that's Typhoons. I mean, I'm not sure why they went for Typhoons. I guess because of a possible hover switch? I mean, there's a gunship switch, but that's dealt with best by Shredders. Of which there are none, I think. Are there any Shredders? Have any Shredders been built so far? I don't see any... No, no icons that would show Shredders. It's not like triangles with the ship base. So yeah. No Shredders. No real way of dealing with those Banshees coming up here. Like three Banshees so far. That will be a problem. That will be a major problem. Yeah, that's weird. Why is the... Okay, I'm getting annoyed by this. This does not look like dynamic water. There we go. There is dynamic water. I knew there was something off. I thought I set it to dynamic. Apparently I set it to reflective refractive. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Okay, now it's actually properly above water. There we go. There it goes, Gazi. Everything should be good now. The reflective refractive does not respect whether or not something is above or below water when doing the refraction effect on it. On the other hand, Dynamic most certainly does. But Yurga, I think, is probably going to take this. Where are the Shredders? They should be... There's the Shredder. But that's only one Shredder so far. And these Banshees have a lot of terrain they can deal with before the Shredder gets to them. The only other Shredder directly is Suicide. But Yurga... Are they going to commit suicide? Apparently they are. Well, they're going to lose one of the Banshees anyway. Bit of a shame that. But these Ducks now know where the Shredder is and are going to go try to deal with it. That hunter, is that going to go down? I don't think it will. 
It might at the cost of the Banshees. No, it's not going to go down. Because the thing is, if that Hunter had gone down, that Shredder would be far more vulnerable. At this point, the Shredder is still kind of vulnerable. It's still going to be difficult for them to deal with it, but it's not as vulnerable. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, Yogstoth, they're losing so much territory right now. And yeah, that Shredder's still threatened. Okay, so that Shredder is still going to have a hard time. Are they going to die, though? That's the big question. I don't know if the Ducks can catch up with them to deal with them. Especially with the two Shredders. Three Shredders now. Yeah, they're just massing up Shredders at this point. But Yurga's massing up territory. Like, who cares about whether or not there are Shredders dealing with the Banshees when there's so much territory in play? The Shredder's doing a great job, though. No doubt about it. They're doing a great job because that's what their that's their point. But at this point, Yurga can just rush in with a bunch of ducks. There's no real hunter force anymore. There's just a bunch of shredders. And the shredders, like one of them is just about to sink right now. And the banshees, if the shredders are out of position, they kill everything. Yurga knows apparently how to play this map. I mean, they chose to play this map. That there was a reason for that. They they knew this map would give them the advantage. And QG Okay, 108 metal. That's pretty big. Like, that's ridiculously big. 108 metal. At this... Yeah, Yogg's basically... So we're going into game 3. Yogg's lost this. It's... Good try with the Hunters. I can definitely see that being the appropriate response. I think if they had built up Shredders a little bit sooner, or built up... Like, razors... Just... It would have been a hard read, but built up Razors around the map? That would have helped a lot, too. Like urchin sported razors, or just razors with just hunters around the map as well, so that the ducks are dealt with. But yeah, Yurga's mix up totally worked. Ripped Yogg'Sadoth wide open, and then just won the game from there. So we're moving on to game three. Yogg'Sadoth pick of map, and Yogg'Sadoth already threatened that they were going to be going. Oh, was it Delta Siege dry? Well, we will see. We will see what happens, because Delta Siege Dry is not a map I want people to play. Ah, that's such a big map. <sighs> we'll see. I don't know, Yogg'Sath is kind of half-jokingly threatening going to Delta Siege Dry. I don't know if they actually will. But that is a massive map. That Oh good, switching to bump map still works. Anyway, sorry, that was a bug in earlier engine versions where everything would go black if I switched to the bump map water. No longer the case! Thank you, engine developers, for fixing that. So yeah, game three. Valid game three, we're having a 2-1 situation, and it looks like not much has changed in the bracket itself. There has been no movement whatsoever. Honu and Clone still playing, Kane and Forever presumably still playing, and Google Frog and Lord Muff are hopefully playing. And yes, Google Frog and Lord Muff are playing, Kane and Forever are playing, they have moved on. They're actually still in game one. Apparently just started playing. And... We don't actually... Yeah, Phil has some time in the shadow. Escape. Yeah, everyone who can play is playing. Good. I like to see that. Make it efficient. So yeah, Aquanim moving forward. Beating on Silent Shadow. So Aquanim is currently doing quite well in the loser's bracket. They'll be up against the winner of Floris and whoever loses between Kane and Forever. Okay. So, game three. Where are we going? Yogg's Well, I don't know. Yogstoth was kind of whining about not having Sierra or Escarpment. So they might just choose one of those. Check both of those. They're very... They're like... Comic Catcher with Hills. Which, I suppose, doesn't make a lot of sense for everyone who doesn't know what Comet Catcher is. But yeah, that's what they're like. Like, Comet Catcher with Hills. Oh, wait. Honu is watching? Did Honu lose? Yeah, I realize that's another game that's not being played right now. Honu and Clone. That's actually no wait. That is, yeah, Honu and Clone. Where's? Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, they are playing. They are just starting their game. Okay, never mind. It's actually going to be, it's CCR. 
It's good old fashioned Comic Catcher Redux. It's going to be CCR. Which I realize is actually kind of weird because, I mean, anyone watching the stream is going to be seeing it suddenly change to Comic Catcher Redux on the stream title, and then two minutes later, it comes up in the game itself. Yep. This is good old fashioned Comic Catcher Redux. Eco map of the century. Of the 20th century, mind you. But still, that that was a century. It, it happened. It stopped happening about 15 years ago, but it happened at one point. I was born there. So it can't have been all bad. Anyway, we are about to begin. And so Yogstoth going for light vehicles, while Yurga goes also light vehicles. Makes sense. This map, as you can see, very flat and fairly large. So it is a map where vehicles are of great use. A massive asset. You really want to go vehicles if you can. Which you always can because vehicles are always available because every factory is available from the start of the game for free. The first one at least. So yes, you can of course go for vehicles. That's an option. And that's a good option in this map. Because of its size. So yeah, this map basically it's just everyone just expands. You just expand and expand and expand and get like halfway across the map and then you try to punch through wherever you can. Assuming the game goes that long. That happens a lot in 2v2s. 1v1s, you can have the game last for 5-10 minutes, maybe. Like, the game can be quite short. And El Torero pointing out... El Torero. El Torero! I, damn it, I almost had it. El Torero. El Torero is pointing out to Yogstoth. Well, pointing out to the, to the spectators. Yogg's position is not the best for defense. The factory is not in a good position. They're going to have to do a lot more prediction as to where Yurga is coming in or rely a lot more on radar. That's, of course, another option. Neither player having gone for radar yet because, honestly, at this point, I mean, it's good for the base. But there's not much... To, wait, no, it's good for the... What am I saying? Why don't you have radar yet? Get some radar. You, like, there's so many attack angles in this map. There's so much... Like, this entire open area here is huge. It's much bigger than it looks. It's a massive area in terms of sight ranges. If you look at Yurga's sight range, this mason right here is just barely able to see it. Like, this slasher is just barely able to see a small section of it right at the edge of the metal extractors. There's a lot of room to sneak around in the back there. That back section, that is dangerous, and there we go. Yurga's got that radar up. They actually can't even see it from there. <laughs> That's what I mean. This is big. Even with the radar, Yogg-Soth could still sneak units past. That's how big that back side of the map is. That's how far away from the edge these metal extractors are. So that's going to be a bit of a problem. That being said, I think the bigger problem is the fact that Yogstoth is in this corner and can't really defend. I mean, they can't defend expansions easily. They can't push units out. Like, they can't build units out of the factory and then from the factory hit everything. They're kind of stuck in a situation where they're basically trying to hit from the edge. They need to have the units already in place. And at this point, just scouting out, seeing what's going on. But Yurga moving in, and not much of the place is defending against this. Lotus is up, and that's about it. Lotus is up. Not sure about anything else. Like, this Lotus won't be enough to deal with the Slashers. Now, over here is not going to be a problem. And actually, one Slasher... Oh, and that's a Slasher and a Dart. Never mind, that will be enough. Yurga just casing the joint... And now they know it's there. They know there is a Lotus there. And they didn't lose much in the process. So Yagatoth right now... Pretty even. Yagatoth and Yurga both pretty even. The harassment should be effective though. Move in! Move in! And mutual death. Oh, not mutual death. Wow, that actually survived. Scorcher actually survived that. Well done. Quite a lot of damage coming from Yagatoth. Right as I say they're even, Yagatoth comes in and starts to... Deal with Yurga's forces. Just take that down. And at the same time, Yurga's sneaking around. Like I said, it's difficult to keep things around. Like, there's so much room in this back section to sneak. But, unfortunately, only one metal extractor taken out. As opposed to, like, three or four and counting from Yogg'Sathoth. 
Oh, no, it's just one so far. But still, and counting, and a mason's down, and another mason's possibly down? No, it's not down. Still impressive work. So Yogstoth right now is definitely getting ahead. Their choice, their counter pick is working out. And their counter pick map. Doing a good job. Doing good work for them. Yorga's not down for the count though. They only lost a bit of metal and they have a fair amount of reclaim to work with now. And they are quite concentrated. I mean, everything's pretty close to their factory. They're pretty much expanding evenly in all directions from their factory. So everything's roughly equally defensible. Whereas Yogstoth their edges are becoming less and less defensible due to their factory position. Like in terms of distance from factory, Yogstoth is running about twice the distance as Yurga. So it's that much harder for the units to rush out to defend. Now the north side's fine, the commander's in the way, and the commander hasn't morphed, but still in the way. The western side of their base, not so much. That is pretty vulnerable at this point. I mean, there are defenses set up, but like a couple defenders, a couple lotuses, and loads of open space between them. Yurga, if they manage to punch through, like, Yogstoth is relying entirely on just scaring Yurga. That's what they're relying on. They need to make sure that Yurga is too scared to leave their base. And they figure, okay, I need to have most of my forces, not all my forces, at my base. Rather than poking around to figure out where the weak spots are. Because Yurga doesn't know where the weak spots are. I mean, fair, it's fair to point out. Yurga does not know where the weak spots are. They don't know where all this stuff is set up. They do know, oh yeah, that's another bug that needs to be fixed. The, the colors need to update. But anyway, Yurga does know where Yurga knows more or less what Yogstoth is. They have some idea of where defenses are, but not... Actually, no, they have no idea. They have no idea. So yeah, Yurga doesn't really know that the stuff's open, and they don't really feel confident in their in their ability to poke it out, because they're just getting hit so hard. Like, Yogstoth is just rushing in on all sides, just poking them out, but that's... Yogstoth has to. They have no defense right now. And they're run, Actually, the, no, they do. Now they do. They're getting a bit more, but still, they don't have much defense. There are there are open areas that Yurga could take advantage of, but Yurga doesn't really have the confidence to deal with them because Yogstoth is just pushing and pushing and making sure Yurga never feels that they can just relax a little bit, send some forces around, check out what else is there. I mean, Yogstoth is expanding hugely, just now setting up static defense. This has been a risky play for Yogstoth because Yurga's going to go for a counterattack right now. And that's the thing about this sort of risky, aggressive play is that eventually it runs out of steam. And when it runs out of steam, you'd better have your defenses set up properly for when your counterattack comes in. Or you better know it's starting to run out of steam, stop it early, retreat, fall back to defenses, regroup, and then have your units and your defenses together, and that stops anything from coming in. But this is the counterattack. You're coming in here trying to counter the expansion with their own attack, and this will actually probably work pretty well. Like, six Scorchers as opposed to, what is it? Yeah, 14 or so. Depending on position, and down go of Yogstoth Scorchers, and Yogstoth's... What is Yogstoth's commander? Commander's up front here. So this area is open. These defenders will be a slight pain, but really not that bad. There are so many Scorchers, all the damage is being distributed, and these defenders are dead. This entire section's dead. Everything down here. This this whole area is dead. Yogstoth's getting very heavily counter-hit. But at the same time, Yurga only has... Eight, only six healthy Scorchers compared to about seven Scorchers. This is going to come down to positioning in Micro. I th Oh, no, I think Yurga has it still. Yeah, Yurga definitely has it. Even running into that Lotus, Yurga... Oh, nicely done. Running around the Solar Collectors. I mean, the thing is, Yurga's f retreating. That's always the thing about Zero-K. If you're the one retreating, you are winning. Your forces are dealing more damage for the damage they're taking in return. I mean, Scorchers are a little weird because of the proximity damage thing, but still. That was advantage to Yurga, so right now, Yurga managing to do a fair amount of counterattack damage, but at the same time, that's actually... That's being offset by the sheer amount of expansion going on simultaneously. Yogstoth is probably going to repair as quickly as they can, too. Yeah, Yurga's counterattack is not as effective as I thought it would be. I mean, it was quite effective in dealing with a lot of this over-expansion, some of the naked expansion parts. But there's a lot of defended areas. I'm a bit surprised the main base was attacked so directly, rather than hitting the fringes over and over. And now it's going to be a problem. Hey, Yurga Scorchers are going to have a bit of... Uh, they're going to have their last stand right now. It's not going to... Well, okay, it's a last stand. That should imply exactly how it's going to go. Not well. Yeah, not, not well at all. 
I think Yogstoth will probably pull this back from here. Hey, who needs a radar? Oh yeah, Yurga needs a radar really badly. Yogstoth has a decent amount of radar coverage. Yurga has no idea what's going on up front. They have no idea whatsoever. But they are also fairly decently defended. But their economy is weaker. The thing is, Yogstoth was able to get away with that expansion because they were attacking very hard while expanding. And that's something you generally want to do, attack while expanding. It's always a good idea. That's what Yogstoth did. And they made it pay off. I mean, Yurga... They probably could have snuck around the back with a couple of Scorchers, especially when they realized that Steam was starting to be lost. They could have snuck around the back and seen what they could have killed. But that counterattack still did a decent amount of damage. It's just that Yogstoth is so far ahead economically that even that, with that counterattack, they were still low, they were still way ahead. And I think this is going to finish it. This looks like it's going to be the final attack. And then come along northwest. It's going to do this and then hit the back. And nothing short of a, a leveler switch. Like switch out to levelers. If Yurga switches out to levelers, they'll be able to stop this around here. But they have to go for levelers like right now. We'll get three or four levelers. And then the Scorchers will come around the corner, come around that mountain, and then... Well, that hill area. And then get killed. The levelers will smash them to pieces. But that's going to require that it actually comes up. And it's not going to. No, no, it's not going to. Yogg's in fact, going for a gunship switch as well. I don't think it matters, though. I really don't. It's about done, too. Yeah, it's done. But even with that, I don't think it's going to make a difference. Like, back up force, get some scorchers, get some banshees to help out, but I don't think it's going to matter. Although, the Stardust, nice Stardust. Good choice. That works, too. I would still be going for the leveler myself just to be able to do another counterattack with that, but at least, at least Yogg stuff has been more or less stopped, but at this point, they've, that attack has been stopped. The damage has not. They're, it's just so much. Even with the overdrive, no, the overdrive's not even that much. It's Yurga is way behind economically. Like Yogg-Soth has the entire map. Yurga has this tiny little section that they started with. Sure, Yogg-Soth had a harder time defending, and they did lose a few to counterattacks, and they're about to lose a few, a bit more to counterattacks, possibly. But they've expanded so quickly, and they had so much territory right now that even this counterattack, even if the Scorcher were to be as successful as it possibly could be, like kill everything it can before hitting defenses, Yurga would still be behind. Way behind. Like, 40 or 50 metal behind, even with the rating. They're currently 60 metal, no, 70 metal behind. Sheesh. That is, that is huge. They're so far behind that rating isn't even going to help Yurga at this point. Like, Inferno's might? <laughs> I don't know. Like, that's the thing. It's like, something really big that deals a ton of damage to a wide area, that might be the way to go. But I don't think so. I think this is going to be GG. Yurga's going to GG in a minute or two. Yep, there we go. Just say within a minute or two. But no, it was when I said it. So yeah. That is game match. Yogstoth takes it 2 1. So, good series. Yogstoth did get some solid wins there on Avalanche. The Inculta win for Yurga, definitely a win. Kind of a counterpick thing, though. So yeah, Yurga has taken that. And Kane off to the loser's bracket. Kane and Floris against each other. Whoever wins continues. Whoever loses gets to co-cast. Well, first. <laughs> that does not on, but yeah. Gets to co-commentate first. So Failthos and Forever will be up next. That is... Where is that? Oh. Wow, that's just started. So let's see how... This